I can do it if you need. Uh, well, I'm recording locally now. Um, I can stop later. Okay. Uh, welcome to the November 11th. Um, all hands. You're not. Sorry. Uh, core implementations make the sync. <laughs> it is me confused. Uh, I guess we can start right off with release process. Um, Alan. Drew, I've just got news that uh, JS IPFS 040 has been, uh, the RC for 040 has just been released. Uh, as it's my first go on the new release process, um, and it's been uh, reassuring to know mm -hmm. that things are, uh, are working really well and, and saving me a whole bunch of time. All of the tests for the examples uh, and all of the repos that uh, our, our early testers um, have that use IPFS, they're all being, all of the tests for those, those things are being run by CI automatically. Uh, so I don't have to do that anymore. And that was previously a very time consuming task. So uh, super good news. Um, but yeah, uh, 040 is out now. Um, it has a few things in it. There's a new repo, repo migration tool. It doesn't do anything just yet, but it's there. And it means that in the future, um, we can do things like uh, migrate between versions of the repo when we decide that the format is going to change for whatever reason. Um, and we'll need to do that at some point soon um, for our CID v1 uh, migration. Uh, uh, so that is, that is good news that that's in there and ready to go. Um, we have uh, support for um, peer IDs encoded as base32 uh, in IPNS. So you can now ask IPNS to resolve a peer ID, a base32 encoded CID peer, peer ID, um, and it will be able to resolve it for you, um, which is super cool. This isn't the, the full uh, CID v1 version uh, with a libp2p key codec. This is literally just um, a, a, an old style peer ID encode, re-encoded as a um, as a CID uh, and uh, and encoded using base32. But yeah, um, that's that's there, that's good. Um, uh, what else is there? There is a new version of WebUI in there and there is a couple of the CLI commands that were missing for um, the DAG API that are now there. So if you're interested in that, go and check out the issue um, that I linked in the notes. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I'm just desperately trying to finish up the notes for the testing. Okay. Um, so we had a testing uh, infra, or specifically a, a uh, test ground uh, hack week last week. Um, got a bunch of stuff done. Uh, I made a lot of progress, but we're not quite where we had hoped to be. Um, so the current status is that we can now run uh, like 100 to 200 with the nodes on an AWS instance. Uh, we can spin up like many of these AWS instances all at once, have them all like specialize and figure out which parts of the test they should be running, connect to each other, and then run the parts of the test and report the and ship the results back off to, um, uh, I think currently we, we were using Elasticsearch. Um, the uh, missing components now are well, quite a few of them. Uh, we're still working on uh, getting like the network simulation stuff working. So latency tuning, bandwidth tuning, um, IP assignment, uh, fake NATs, that kind of stuff, maybe like dropping packets. Um, uh, this isn't particularly tricky. It's just, well, some tricky ideas, but we know basically how to do this. So I'm currently working on it. Uh, mixed networks, uh, that is a go FS with JSFPS or different versions, different things like this. We haven't quite started on this yet. We're not entirely sure the right way to do this. The current thinking is maybe just like, or at least my current thinking is maybe you should just be deploying um, uh, images that have everything. Uh, and then like at runtime, we just figure out which one we want to run. The problem here is like many of the systems we're using don't let you like configure individual machines. Instead, they say, well, you can like, you basically just say, spin up X number of this, of this type of node. It'll just do it. Um, so like, another way to do this mixed instance is just to like basically spin up multiple swarms. This is the terminology in Docker. Um, so you spin up multiple swarms and then connect them together, but we haven't quite figured that one out. Uh, we also, um, uh, uh, don't uh, have like one click runs on AWS. So you can run it locally easily. You can run it in Docker locally easily on AWS. It still means like setting the AWS account and figuring out how to do all the kind of stuff and that can be like tricky for new users or people who are like me and have no freaking clue how to use AWS. Um, 
So that's still a work in progress, I think. I'm not sure. Um, the end goal of this is the next item there, GitHub integration. Uh, so we would like to be able to just make this like, you just submit a PR, you like call out to some bot and the bot and runs this test on, on Amazon. Uh, we actually like, think that we should be able to run media or mid-scale tests this way without costing too much money. Um, because like if we just spin up these nodes on demand, run the test really quickly and shut them down, like it, they cost like a buck. Like really our experience is like, it will cost almost like a, a buck per physical machine um, if we, and each physical machine can fit, we think around 100 to 200 nodes. Although when we were testing with 100 to 200 nodes, we were getting a bunch of other crashes. So we're going to have to figure one out. Um, but yeah, it should be affordable. Uh, next uh, dashboard, Jim is currently working on that. Um, trying to make it so people can actually view the results in some nice, like easy and integrated way. Uh, We've been going back and forth on, on like, the right approach to this, but hopefully we'll continue making progress. Uh, improve look speed tracing. Uh, this is something that's kind of critical, we've realized, where like we can display like certain results, but we can't like dig down into like what loop is actually doing. Um, so like uh, we can display timing results and you can say like, oh, this like this change improves something, this change didn't improve something, but like it'd be really nice to be able to get like exact timing, like this little piece here is what took a lot of time. Or, this is like this event here got stuck. Um, but we don't currently have this. Uh, and I don't think anyone is currently working on this. I think, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, uh, Rule wasn't looking into this. Though. I think he was trying to find someone to take it on. Um, so that's the current status of testing infra. Uh, tied in with this is the GoFS release process, but of course that's blocked on this. So status update is um, uh, GoFS will probably not have a uh, release before lab week, or sorry, a, an RC before lab week, um, but it will have a release before the end of the year. Um, regardless of what happens. Uh, uh, and I'm hoping to find a time at Lab Week to get a bunch of people together um, uh, to like a final push on like writing tests for test infra and actually using it. Um, so to make that happen, um, it needs to actually be like usable by external devs, like not just in local laptop. So right now you can totally use local laptop, it'll work great, but like actually like usable on the network. Uh, so yeah, that is the testing update, at least my testing update. I don't see anyone else here who was at the test week. So, yes, Dirk. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, with respect to, I think you said there that you can spin up a whole bunch of uh, instances on one AWS machine. Is that right? Rather than yes, Docker. Rather than using separate uh, AWS machines. Yes. Okay, so, and and is that how we're sort of like? I'm just wondering if we're going to have any tests that are, are going to be like really simulating what might happen in the network where you have literally multiple machines. I uh, so the thing is with Amazon, like unless we actually have like real machines, we're, we're not really going to have that. So like um, the, the the system is supposed to be flexible enough that I mean ideally we could, if you want to, go out and buy a bunch of Raspberry Pis um, and just make it happen. Um, but even like basically it comes down to cost. Um, where like even if we ask like even if we use separate instances in Amazon, Amazon still just can give us separate VMs. Uh, so they're not really going to different machines. The way we're planning at simulating this is using TC and setting latency rules. Um, yeah, so basically like all outbound packets will be given a certain latency, we'll have it with setting network bandwidth, like drop rates, all that kind of stuff. So we think it should be as close as we can get it. Um, even if we had them on separate machines, so wouldn't like they would still probably be within the same data center. So like we still need to submit this network changes. Yeah, the ideal solution would be to just set up a massive farm of Raspberry Pis all across the country. Like th the next step on this project, well, a future step could be that. Uh, it would be really awesome to be able to just like ship Raspberry Pis to contributors and say, "Hey, could you just like set this up on your network, connect it to your router, and just like let us like test like this global internet testing system?" That would be awesome. It's actually a really good idea. Can, yeah. Can we do that ourselves to start with? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yes. Yeah. As a, as uh, but not not like I. I think right now we want to focus on like making this just work initially, where we can just like quickly deploy these tests. But yes, being able to just like set that up, deploy. Like we definitely need very good Docker caching. We're going to do that so we don't just like destroy people's bandwidth by like constantly downloading images. Uh, but yeah, if we could just ship people Raspberry Pis that we have access to, that would actually that'd be really cool. Or we I could let like, people just like install themselves. I have a whole box of Raspberry Pis that could definitely run some test uh, nodes on them. But yeah, this is future stuff. I do, like for now, we just want to make the, it work so we can ship a release. 
So I have one other question there. Um, mm -hmm. When you say mixed networks, Go IPFS plus JS IPFS versions, etc., does that include like versions of dependent libraries like Bitswap? Um, yes. Yeah. Basically, we want to be able to deploy multiple versions of nodes for like they have different configurations. At the moment, like every node is the same, and like you just specialize at runtime. But like most languages don't let you import multiple copies of the same library unless they're like different major versions. Uh, or can easily do that. Uh, yeah, so again, the current thinking here is like, well, basically we have two options. We could either deploy multiple images or one image with everything and then specialize at runtime. Um, there are trade-offs. Uh, like the way we're, just for sort of technical integration, the way we're communicating in the system is using Redis. So basically everyone writes to Redis and then everyone just subscribes to Redis. Um, uh, the problem is like, if we end up starting a new process, that means like both these processes need to communicate with Redis and need to coordinate and then it just gets slightly trickier. It's not that bad. Um, like, Okay, yeah, wrap it up, got it. Um, yeah, sorry, we don't have to, this doesn't have to be a Q and A, sorry. But yes. Ella? Just, so just a quick clarification, the, the Go IPFS 0 0.5 release mm -hmm. is hopefully uh, to be expected by the end of the year if all things go to plan, which means that the test ground should be getting ready or ready enough to, to be able to test things uh, to an ad adequate level that we're okay to release 0 0.5. Mm -hmm. um, and so what does that mean for 0 0.4, 23, 22, the next? No, 23. 4. Um, yeah, so uh, I didn't put that on this, uh, but we've talked about a 0 0.4.23. Um, I currently decided to pump that unless someone like really desperately needs it and it's somehow worth the time, but I don't think gotcha. it, it is. Um, basically, there are a couple of issues that we would kind of like to fix, but it's not like a burning fire, like actually fixing the DHT and cutting a release just takes time, even if it's just a patch release. Uh, so yeah, the, the plan is just gun for 0 0.5.0 and make it happen. Um, in terms of like what will be included in 0 0.5.0, um, that really depends on what's ready. Uh, when we were trying to shoot for lab week, the, the goal was basically just the DHT because that's what we, like, that's the minimum that has to be in release. Um, if we end up missing lab week, then hopefully we can include the bit swap changes. But again, depends, it depends on what's tested, minimum fix DHT. Cool, thank you. And also, there will definitely be a release before the end of the year. I can guarantee that. We will progressively start dropping more and more things if there's not if it's not coming. If we will cancel Christmas. Okay. Uh, subdomain gateway. Okay, light is not here. Okay. Uh, distributed signaling on hold. IPNS. Adin. Okay, yeah. Uh, so IPNS over PubSub, it's, this is mostly like bubbling things up and dealing with all the conflicts that show up. Um, since pub, the pub sub changes have, have basically landed now. Um, so yeah, one of them is ready for review, uh, which is just like removing all the old crufty bootstrapping code, because now we have new snazzy stuff. Um, they're breaking API changes. Uh, no one should care. There's been uh, a forum post on discuss.libp2p.io saying that this was going to happen since June. Um, no one has said anything other than thumbs up, so should be fine. Uh, putting this into Go IPFS is the next thing. I had not had much experience with Sharnas tests and making sure that I deal with all of our fun new dependency injection stuff. So getting some review to make sure I've done that right would be great. Uh, and then I've got to do some uh, writing test ground tests for IPNS things, which also looks a lot like DHT put and get. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to talk with the test ground team about how to do that and, and what comes next. Any questions? Otherwise I'll continue because I'm the next one also. All right, add performance. Uh, People seem to be on board with asynchronous data stores. So that's good. Uh, 
this is potentially as easy as just flipping a flag, but we don't need to know what's going to break if we just flip a flag and switch all of our data stores from synchronous to asynchronous. Um, we know nothing will break on Windows more than is already broken because Windows is, is using asynchronous data stores all the time. We just didn't realize it. Uh, so yeah, I, I could go and look through everywhere that we use a data store in our code base, but if people who already know the answer to this could help me, that would be great too. Uh, Adina, I think you're gonna have to do that anyways. I think you should just like download everything, do a grep, uh, find all the uses, check to see if we really care about it. And then if we do, put the sync in there. Like, so like this, this will be a big thing, but I would just go for it and make it happen. Um, and don't wait for other people. Okay, sure. I mean, I don't, yeah. All right. I guess I'll just, I'll just do it. I'm going to assume though that like most of these things that don't actually store, the only things that we store that are persistent are like blocks. Yeah, if it's not a block or an IPNS record, then we yep. don't care if it goes away. Mostly, yeah. So just do the search um, in review. Like I can check and other people can check your work to make sure we got the right things. Um, like actually a wonderful way of doing this is like you create a, an issue that's audit all uses of like the data store and like says doesn't need to be synced, doesn't have to be synced. You just check everything off, let other people check the same thing. So if you want to create the issue, that'd be great. Yeah, and then the last thing is that uh, because switching to asynchronous data stores is either a use Badger instead of FlatFS or make your Badger use a different flag, uh, we should consider whether the upgrade path is telling people who have Badger already installed to change a flag or to fix our config files. Um, um, I think we need to fix the config files as we talked about before. We don't want to get into that now. Um, but for now, like, look, Badger is still technically experimental. Uh, there's no reason we can't just tell people to like say, hey, like, if you are hurting from this performance issue, switch. Otherwise, you're fine. But most users, don't, like, it kind of hurts, but it, like, honestly, the performance is not terrible compared to disk. Um, it's really like people who are ingesting tons of data that really care, and they will listen and they will change this. Uh, so, cool. Thank you, okay. Adine, for taking this on. This is awesome. Okay. This is very exciting. Uh, migrate keys. Or multi hash. Sorry, no, this is not key store. This is multi hash block stores. Uh, yeah. Okay, I can talk to this. Um, the uh, yeah, migration to multi hash keys in block store. Um, the Rupa migration tool has been merged and is in zero forty. Um, I am currently reviewing a migration to um, to to change the repos keys from CIDs to multi hashes. So that's the current status on that. You're muted. Stephen, you're muted. I assume you're telling me to stop talking about BitSwap. <laughs> uh, actually, I was talking about, yeah, let's start talking about BitSwap. Did you, was there something you said that you want us to know? No, never mind. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I've implemented a test ground plan for BitSwap, which is multiple seed, multiple leech uh, scenario. Um, so, when I say implemented, I mean that it works on my local machine, so we still need to Get it, uh, make sure it works in the cloud, and then I'm going to start looking at <clears throat> how we're going to actually visualize uh, what's coming out of that. Meaning, you know, is it passing the the tests? Um, I need to add a couple of extra things into that test ground plan. One is going to be being able to stagger when we make requests. So if there's multiple leeches, then they don't all start at the same time. Um, and I'm going to be so I'm going to be here and here today and tomorrow, and then uh, from Wednesday to Friday, I'll be in Nicaragua. So I'll be taking that time off, so people know. And then I'll be in Costa Rica. Oh, on holidays. <laughs> Any questions? Okay. Uh, next up, get swap update. Oh, no, sorry, just it. Uh, is it what your factor? Yeah, uh, yeah. JSLibDP, we finished the 
um, identify refactor is done. Um, that also includes new support for identify push in JS. Uh, circuit relay refactor is in progress, should be done this week. Uh, we refactored the peer store um, and also added a registrar that we're going to be using for connection management. Uh, pub sub, flood sub, and gossip sub should hopefully be finished this week um, because we finished the blockers for those. Um, SecIO refactor is mostly done. Um, I need to review it, and I think there might be a couple small blockers that need work. Um, MKG did a some local benchmarks. Um, there's a link to those, and that showed a pretty significant performance improvement over callbacks. Um, so hopefully we should get some uh, boosts in performance for JS through that. So that is it for loop to Hooray. Okay, I can talk to the JS IPFS HTTP API. Um, I found a little bit of time to do the async await refactor in the HTTP API for BitSwap and that was reviewed and merged. Um, and then, uh, Pedro, would you like to talk about uh, what you've been up to? Yeah, sure. Um, so the interop uh, refactor uh, was finally merged. Um, and the next the next thing is to merge the interface core that is being uh, we already have a PR and is being review reviewed, so we are almost there. Any question? To update people on the async await um, stuff, we, we're looking really good for um, finishing off this work this quarter. There's only a few uh, things that are left that are in flight. The P2P is almost done. Um, there's a bunch of things that are gonna hopefully land this week. Um, IPFS is coming down to just the HTTP client and IPFS and largely um, IPFS has already been, um, been done. Um, so yeah, this whole, Thing can finish at some point soon and we can start to realize some of the benefits. Um, so that's good news. Sounds good. Um, okay. Design review proposals. Okay, so this is what we talked about last week, but I didn't have time for it last week. Uh, uh, I scheduled one Tuesday morning for me, uh, evening for everyone else in Europe. Uh, this is the second design review on Unix OS 1.5 but we've started to have disagreements on things. Uh, so we should like talk about this and just like, now that we actually have like the spec proposal there, we can iron out the last few things and hopefully just merge the spec proposal live at the meeting or make updates live. Um, we'll see, but like, this is something we're using to like, you know, pull the trigger, make it happen, uh, figure out any last like things. Uh, so yeah, please come if you're available. Uh, hopefully the time works. If it doesn't, you really want to come, please tell me. Okay. Uh, blockers asks anything that's not listed. Nope. Okay. Questions. Yes. I don't know. This is maybe maybe neither of these. Maybe neither a blocker nor nor a question or an ask nor a question. But uh, given that the uh, JS libp 2 p like pub sub stuff is is still far along now, and all the gossip stuff is in there, uh, is there any interest in Porting over the pub sub router changes as well, so that the IPNS over pub sub stuff works in JS land, or should we wait on that until it's released in 050? Which changes? Like adding in like the protocol changes to do persistent pub sub stuff that doesn't exist in JS land. Uh, okay, so IPNS for pub sub still works the same way. It just the JavaScript nodes won't support this persistence thing. It'll also be a little awkward because the Go nodes will expect, like if the Go nodes happen to be connected to JS nodes, they'll be really sad. I, yeah, I see. I mean, the, when they try to do discovery, they likely won't connect to JS nodes because they're mostly in the browser and those are mostly things you can't dial. But. Actually, why will they be sad? confused as to why they might be sad. Uh, the what, reason they'll be sad is that they're going to try and ask for, they're going to try and like ask the nodes that they connect to and be like, hey, what's the latest version in case I missed an update? Uh, and the JS ones will be like, 
I don't understand what language you're speaking. And the Goans will be like, here's the answer. So but, if they happen to connect to a JS node, if they happen to connect to like only JS nodes, they'll be very sad. If I recall correctly, we like we ask basically everyone we're connected to in, in series or something like that. Like we have some like we basically team search until we find it. So like we'll be sad for a bit until we find someone. Um, it's probably fine. It, the J, the Go nodes will probably be fine as long as there are exist other Go nodes in the network. Mm -hmm. How sad are we talking? Like slightly unhappy or a crash in some form? Slightly unhappy. Slightly It'll unhappy. be no worse than currently. An, an error lock. No, no, it won't be an error or anything. It'll literally just be like exactly what we have right now. Basically, okay. we won't get all the good features. But yeah, I think it'll be fine. Maybe a, a thing to add to any sort of pack time backlog of cool stuff that could happen, but also doesn't sound critical for, to pull people off, say, like async await or something like that. Mm -hmm. Accurate prioritization. Sounds good to me. Okay, uh, so that's first parking lot thing. Holly? Uh, I have to dash it almost immediately. So I just wanted to mention that we did see some very weird behavior on the gateways on Sunday where they've been running reliably for weeks and then they all started crashing on Sunday. Uh, all six, 15 of the 16 nodes uh, would crash roughly once an hour, um, all with the same error that's linked to from the notes. Um, so it'd be good to get some eyes on that. So I've actually seen this before. I've looked into it. We had an issue that we closed because that we thought we fixed it. Um, I'd have to double check to which versions, but if you go to the GoFus issue tracker, you're not the only person it's who saw this. There. I, I put the issue there. Oh, did you put the issue? I thought someone else. No, I just did that. OK, cool. Good to know. And just in case anyone else didn't get the message already, the four new bootstrap nodes are now monitored, so we can consider them production ready. So you can all start using them, but your code will be using them anyway, unless you're JS IPVS, in which case we need to figure out whether you're going to start supporting DNS adders uh, soon or whether we should get you some DNS flavored uh, multi adders for the new bootstrap nodes. But I can't stay any longer, so I'm going to leave. Goodbye. Okay, uh, no, so I they found the issue. I'm going to reopen it. Uh, we had someone over the weekend, it was unrelated, uh, say they saw the same error. But unfortunately, I have no idea what's actually causing this. I looked into it before and I couldn't find anything. I think I tried, I think I added some small fix to fix it and we got created the WebSocket transport. Uh, yeah. Okay. Molly's got a thing. I just wanted to make a really quick PSA that we're going, we have, you know, a month left in this quarter. I know we just did mid quarter grading, but it's, it's really a month left. And we have a lot of things that we really, really care about landing things that um, unblock a ton of other work, things like the async await refactor, things like getting ODOT 5.0 at the door. Um, and really want to encourage everyone to focus and think about how they can best empower their teammates to get these really important things across the line. Um, and that, you know, it will be tempting to find new shiny things and start trying to push them forward. But let's be really thoughtful about um, kind of how we collectively spend our effort to, to help land these P0s um, and, and be thoughtful also about like review time of other people and like, you know, other uh, non-tangible non ways that, um, our, our work picking up new things might impact other people. So focus, 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 and let's make this an awesome end of the quarter. Okay, see you all.